thank you, Janet, uh, for asking me to do this, and I'm, I'm very honored uh, to be here this morning and to talk to you about giving people a second chance. Uh, last night, I was at a, uh, an event, and so I uh, was going to stay out a little later, and I said, no, I've got to go home so I can prepare my remarks to give to you uh, this morning. And when I thought about it, and thought about uh, giving people a second chance, or the thing that we're talking about more accurately, of returning uh, ex-offenders back to their communities with success. And the question that came to my mind is, why should we? I think that's the question that we ask ourselves, not only today, but yesterday and tomorrow. And I asked myself the question, how many of you and I have fallen short? How many of us have regretted something that we did, wished that we had not done it, and wished that we had not participated in some act or situation that got us in trouble? And how many of you can remember someone who helped you in your journey in your life to adulthood? whether it was a teacher, a friend, a pastor, a preacher, a business associate, or even a stranger. Someone along the line helped us to make this journey. But rather the theme this morning is giving chances to individuals who are returning back into society from incarceration. Individuals who need our help bridging the gap from a system of confinement to a system of a free society. This inmate became a giver instead of a taker. He became a taxpayer instead of a drain on the tax system. He became a father of four stepsons. And I asked myself the question, why or what was it that made Governor McCall take the risk and have the courage to bring an individual on his staff who probably at the time, and if I've wrote the passages of some in this book, was one of the individuals who was deemed beyond redemption, who was deemed to have his life totally left inside the prison. Was it McCall's compassion? Was it McCall's focus on strategies that gave Oregon a return on its investment? I use that term because my good friend Dick Withnell is fond of telling us about the return on investment. Was it McCall's vision that he could take an individual and that individual became, became a taxpayer who could pay his own room and board and, and pay his child support payments and began to become a taxpayer and taking care of his family? What was it that McCall was thinking about then that we must think about now? Was Tom McCall thinking about the principles of Oregon's Constitution, Reformation, and Redemption? Or maybe he was thinking about the Christian principles of forgiveness? Whatever Tom's motives and reasoning, I applaud him for his courage and risk that he took in hiring the person that later became my husband. As I thought about the theme changing lives and building a safer community, I've also thought about the years of the McCalls and where we are today. And I have to tell you that the barriers to housing the barriers to employment, the barriers to the stigmata of being an ex-offender, those obstacles are probably greater today than they were in 1968. Those obstacles of moving a person from uh, the confinement back to our community, uh, we have placed a lot more obstacles and laws in the way of people making that transition back. And I think that's a tragedy. Because it's all of our hopes 
at least it's my hope, that once an individual has paid, as we say, their debt, that we have the ability to forgive. We have the ability to assist those individuals back into our communities. Because certainly, each and every one of those individuals belong to someone. I think they also recognize something very important. Communities thrive and are vibrant when we are able to wrap our arms around those who belong to us. But you know what? I think this community is up to the task. I do, and I'm so pleased with the sheriffs and our law enforcement, our whole community is here this morning to help us on this journey. And it is a journey. And I would like to say, you know, when I look back and I think about 2010, that we too have the courage and the conviction that Atama call had in 1968. 